is last night we uh we watched this so this is fan fest of ign and uh they they showed off nightingale um they've, they've titled this video creatures world and law explained they got two of the devs on i don't know their names and um, we'll find out in a minute but this is something for us to to look out for i don't know when but they're saying 2022 at some point this year but this is this is something that looks fucking fun it's not pv i don't think it's got pvp in it uh, i'm pretty sure it's not gonna have pvp in it for a while but it it's looking cool and it's looking like it could be good fun got to look at nightingale this is kind of not first look but it's a look this is going to be kind of cool kind of exciting game whether you like it or not i think you're going to like it <laughs> just, just take just take a look have a chill and take a look at this Max Scoville here for IGN and I'm joined by Aaron Flynn and Neil Thompson from Inflection Games showing off Nightingale. Gentlemen. Aaron and Neil. Inflection Games showing off Nightingale. Gentlemen, welcome. Hi, Max. Uh, so Hi. Nightingale was a big, huge reveal at the Game Awards. It is a survival crafting shared world game that is uh, has a very distinct kind of uh, Victorian gas lamp aesthetic. Uh, there's a lot going on here. Before we dive into all that, can we give, get a little bit of background on sort of Please. what Inflection Games are as a studio? Thank you, boys. Uh, what your background is and and where this all came from yeah thanks max um so inflection games is about three and a half years old now it's interesting uh, it, Josh. it's looking good man uh, myself the, the only thing I, the only thing I, I haven't looked at this in full detail though a couple of things i'm i'm interested in are how many people like how because it's co-op you can basically build a base and co-op and blah 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 blah. um how many players you can have on co-op co-op players so a few things we're looking for um pvp question mark i'm pretty sure there's no pvp <clears throat> but we'll, we'll take a look for these uh this bit of info here so co-op pvp <clears throat> and anything else that we look for uh, as we're watching Bioware, plus some new folks who joined us around the industry um we put together here in <clears throat> it's a new world in 200 years, uh, about three and a half years the artwork's ago, stunning man it is a, it looks beautiful now, and uh, we're working on this one project nightingale which we were very happy to reveal uh at the game awards uh, about a month and a half ago now to be fair, how, how, oh my God. How similar does that look? I don't know if it's in this trailer. Where was the, that is so new world vibes, man. Where is that shot? I don't know if it'll be here now. You know, he's like getting, getting the, uh, the, uh, the thing, the thing. Oh, here is he, it's fucker. You guys who you guys who have watched loads of New World would have would have remembered. There's a there's a bit there's a there's a bit where he, he grabs the, the the gem out of the thing. Oh man, it's so New Worldy vibe. Anyway, fuck off New World. Oh wow, time flies. <laughs> now, um, Nightingale is I, I feel like what's up twenty one. The you know the, the Josh Rowe is he's heading out for it. You know, let's go. It should be fun, man. That, but, uh, I know I know we're hard grinding Lost Ark right now. I know it, but let's have a few a few hours tonight together, man. It'll be it'll be great fun. Team building, team building. Uh, the sort of survival crafting side of things is uh, a little bit new here. Can you talk a little bit about what makes Nightingale different from sort of other games in that genre? Crafting info. So yeah, we're looking sure. for crafting um, so info. Definitely, world building was something we wanted to invest in. You're right. We learned a lot world of lessons building? working on Mass Effect, Dragon Age, um, other games at Bioware, and really, really understanding what players want, what creates a living, breathing <laughs> world that players want to spend their time in, what, what really want to invest in. Uh, and so we took a lot of those lessons here to to Inflection as we put together the plans for uh, for Nightingale. Uh, what we decided it's to a beautiful up looking game was like... the formula for gameplay. So Bioware obviously, and a lot of us spent a lot of time building. Um, uh, RPGs, action RPGs, uh, great shooting mechanics in Mass Effect. Look at this, uh, wonderful, man. Wonderful, um, wonderful uh, mechanics in Dragon Age Origins. Look at the giant. Uh, this is but super we cool. To put, uh, this survival crafting spin in it, so we spent oh! a lot of time understanding this. Okay, okay. S simple but simple but stunning. Remember how when we all first started getting excited about New World? Remember the trees falling, and then we, then we started getting excited about the fucking trees falling in Valheim because you could knock people over them and kill them. It's funny as fuck. Look at this tree falling, man. If they got some good sound effects on this, uh, little, little details like that could go a long way, man. Uh, but we want to put uh, this survival crafting oh. spin in it, so we spent a lot of time understanding the survival crafting I'm genre. So Still learning lots in that <laughs> uh, in that area. Um, sorry, it's a really, really sorry, man. Genre for innovation, for new plans, for uh, these really, really smart teams coming up with really interesting and compelling <laughs> new gameplay stuff. Uh, and so we're learning a lot about that and finding really fun survival crafting gameplay to put in front of players. 
Now, of course, there is the uh, the fantasy element. You've got incredible Chief gigantic the end, monsters and creatures sword. roaming around. Could you give me a little bit of context of sort of where where players are? Like, what is what is this world? What are they doing there? How are why are the monsters mad at them? Let's. I guess let's let's start there. You can think about our universe as a, as a kind of. Thank you, Max. We'll take a look of, after this. Uh, 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 it would be great. It would be great to see. Seemingly endless number of realms, uh, and as uh, we call them, realm walkers uh, that you that you play. You're so we'll watch the trailer to this after this. It gave game. me like. Uh, and the realms are inhabited by. It, it gave me like uh, Jurassic Park, like a fucked up Jurassic Park type feeling to it. Look! Look at that! Look at that creature, man! You would not want to fight that. By creatures, by monsters, <laughs> by, by wildlife, Fuck that. Um, and you got to. This game's called Nightingale. You, fit. Um, you know, we saw in the uh, the reveal trailer we had uh, creatures like the uh, the hill yes. giant, uh, and we saw him in the in the reveal trailer. He was kind of breaking up. It's pretty cool. Like, watch when he takes the shot. You can see on his on his body, like the shot kind of ricochet off. It's, like the, it's uh, pretty the cool. Giant. Uh, and we saw him in the in the reveal Boom. trailer he was kind of breaking up your house but we also saw him taking an offering from players and um it was really really stunning us, uh that in your interactions with with creatures even seemingly you know monstrous creatures there's not always a, a violent outcome there's there's other ways to to mitigate your situation than just by violence alone now let's talk a little bit about the sort of the, the creature design uh neil that's that's one of the questions i'm hoping we're gonna get out of this uh, fan fest video is uh, i believe so far from the info that they've shared is that it's kind of like a co-op survival game it's not pvp but it's co-op survival but they haven't kind of given too much too much details on it yet so i'm hoping we see it throughout this video there's this kind of a wonderful like you know victorian aesthetic and you you have a, a monster called the bandersnatch which has some wonderful kind of lewis carroll dna can you speak a little bit about the you know i guess the the, the look of these creatures yeah, we very much um, because it is that that sort of Victorian period, which is a, an incredibly visually evocative period. Um, and from a creature perspective, we wanted to uh, really delve into this idea of folklore and fairy tale, uh, and gain our <laughs> inspirations from there. So the the, the Bandersnatch um, in our in our world, uh, it's uh, it's kind of a uh, pretty vicious cross between a, a, a raptor and a, a kind of bat-like creature and they, they do definitely take some kind of um, not prehistoric dinosaur vibes from their, from their creatures man would it be uh, reasonable to expect that maybe a jabberwocky make would make an appearance <laughs> could be could do okay <laughs> they, they are, there are, they are no limits sort of to, these, uh, to these things <laughs> yeah. uh, now can you talk a little bit about the uh, the bound and the harpies yeah uh, the bound are great yes um I, I like the band a lot. I think they're a wonderful faction. They're essentially our, our, our main enemy within the world. Sexy. Of the Fae, and the Fey have created the bound uh, as a mimicry of humanity. Effectively, they 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 create them in vats. They're sort of magical, magically spawned, uh, and then they send them out into the worlds to combat against um, uh, unwary realm walkers. And there's lots of different factions. Um, you know, in the uh, in the reveal trailer, we saw some minions who are just kind of pop and quadruped enemies that will just throw themselves at you but there's also um ones with more magical abilities more ranged abilities uh tank-like creatures there's a there's a, a bound bruiser in the reveal trailer who has a, a wheel for a head uh, which what? was kind of cool and, and we thought it was interesting it was cool. so there's lots of variation lots of factions coming along and uh, the harpies, uh, the harpies were fantastic creatures. Uh, they um, fucking terrifying, well, we, man. We started thinking about terrifying kind of mythical and, and creatures oh. from folklore. Um, you know, we thought about harpies, and then our uh, our concept team took that took that idea and really ran with it. And then we started thinking about you know the ways a creature like that, who who her behavior is that they they steal things from players. They will steal uh, steal your stuff in the encampment. And we started thinking Ooh. about, well, maybe they disguise themselves to better to the kind of idea that they might almost have take on this sort of human visage with the face and the, the cloak around them to almost look like an old woman where they're, where they're in the realms. I mean, of course, it doesn't look like an old woman when you get up close, but by then it might be too late. Now, let's talk about the realms some more. How, how do players sort of get between them? How do you do actual realm walking within the, the game? 
Well, that's a great question, Max. So, um, I don't players know what realm walking is. Entering to portals, and they'll, they'll find portals all throughout the realms that they're exploring. And they'll have the choice then to decide to stay in the realm that they're in. I'm going to assume realms uh, are different kind of and we're not worlds, continents, exactly players will do that, environments. But it'll involve a, a relatively uh, complex process of, of deciding which realm you want to go to, of, um, of uh, getting the right materials to make sure that you have the uh, the gear. Beautiful looking that. game. Uh, and then ensuring that whatever's on the other side of that portal, you have the right um, tools, the right equipment, and even potentially the right party members with you uh, to go off and to explore that realm on the other side. Oh, that was uh, a so beautiful. The whole goal is to that was a beautiful axe, man. Let me just grab Scythe's video ready for us to watch. Was that baby? Look at this, man. That was fucking beautiful. That looks so good that you have the uh, the gear to go do that, uh, and then ensuring that whatever's on the other side of that portal, you have the right um, tools, the right equipment. Oh, and pirate ship in the distance. And even potentially Get my right horn on. members with <laughs> you uh, to go off and to explore that realm on the other side. Um, so the whole goal is to give players lots of opportunities to explore a realm, and then when they're ready to, they'll find a portal, and they'll decide uh, if they want to go to another realm, and what exactly that realm will be. Should we expect the realms to be just drastically different in terms of... <laughs> you know, climate and environment and, you know, things living there. The, the realms very oh, much absolutely. remind me I of mean, like a uh, Stargate SG-1 vibe. To the experience of Nightingale. So, uh, you see you can imagine the circular context, vibe. Yeah, we're, we're looking at. Now, sp speaking of creatures, the, the name is a is a creature. A Nightingale's a, a, a bird. What what's the what's the context there? What does that have to do with the, the game? Actually, it, it came from Nightingale's a bird. Nightingale bird. It is. This is the common nightingale. It's a fucking bird. I'll tell you what, ga gaming gaming is uh it's informative, bro. You can learn a lot through games. Love it. <laughs> there you go. Nightingale's a fucking bird. I don't know what I'm reading. There's lots of words here that I don't understand. Let's move on quick. From the came from the one in the very earliest days when we were when we were um, uh, putting the concept together and the, and the idea of uh, you know a, a lost city effectively uh, and as it as it, as, it, as it grew as the law grew as we had more ideas around the world we started to call uh, the city be uh, gradually uh, took on this name of Nightingale uh, and then as we progressed we just thought some of these shots are stunning man a great name for the game itself and the game of a good environment chose. yeah for you me it goes a long way that's why influences in, in designing the creature well, i held on to new world, world. Well, i'm holding uh, on to new world for so long was there any kind of you know art or media you were looking to for for inspiration or drawing from you mentioned fairy tales yeah lots i mean it it, it it's such a, a rich period i mean one of the main inspirations just conceptually for the for the, for the whole nightingale experience was a a book by susanna clark called uh, jonathan strange and mr norell um that aaron and i both love um it's a really it, it was televised it's a really fantastic uh, bbc show as well and not, <laughs> not because it deals with the exact same themes but w what's great about it is it's long left this to get our questions within answered within the book that there's a world beyond the veil effectively and if you pierce that veil you know bad things can happen or, or uh, you you suddenly lose control over what can happen and that was our kind of uh parallel oh between shit. the world of fey and the fey wild that was setting that we that we have within the game there's the stargate I mean, visually you know bro we, we look at that's stargate of, um, sg1 historical art you know um, oh my god environment director look at everyone's dress as well on, it looks amazing uh, dutch art so when you look at the game you look at all the lighting within the game we're using those kind of classical art experiences and influences uh to to kind of influence the overall aesthetic of nightingale as a product awesome that sounds wonderful the dutch masters were definitely doing some come on max ask some juicy info quick, quick at the end please before, before the time uh, <laughs> absolutely. Now, absolutely if you two say so i don't know i mean sure <laughs> <laughs> no there's, there's a lot of weird stuff a lot of weird you know vaguely fantastic looking historical art like that um now let's talk about when players can get their hands on this you, you're doing early access is that right that's right. Yeah. So we're uh, we're going to start playtesting in the very near future here. So we've had uh, <laughs> you can sign up at playnightingale.com to learn more and then we'll be inviting a few folks in as needed based on uh, some parameters, things like uh, PC specs and, and stuff like that. Familiarity with the genre. Okay, so a uh, little to no info. <laughs> uh, basically zero of our questions were answered. Fantastic. Um <laughs> 
<laughs> standard. No, I mean, I, I guess that's just kind of a quick look and they're building the hype, really. They don't want to hype it up too much too soon. The questions I'm after um, were if this co-op PvP and a bit more info on the crafting. What they've said is, if you want to play the game, uh, let's get it. Mm, I think... Gale. Now it's showing me all the birds. <laughs> Playnightingale.com. If you're interested, boys, you can get yourself signed up over on their website. But the game, I see a couple of questions. The game is called Nightingale. And what they've said here is it's a shared a shared world survival crafting game set in an all new fantasy universe. And there's not too much out there about it yet. I want you to see the trailer before we move on to something else because the trailer's fucking wicked. Um, so, uh, I get, I, okay, so what they've said is, does, does Nightingale have my player? Yes, you can play Nightingale solo or with friends and others who you meet across the realms. It's very vague. It's very vague at the moment. It doesn't kind of say numbers or or PvP or anything, but word on the street is that there's no pvp but it looks like you can just meet people in an open server which is pretty cool so hopefully see some more information about that but but just check out this trailer boys it is a fucking cool trailer and then um we'll move on to the the next bit boom okay let's go That I would shit, I would shit my pants playing this game. And then look, look at that, dude. <laughs> T-Rex vibes or what? Raptors and T-Rex. Stranding us in these realms, we have searched for a way home. Very explorer, Lost. Jurassic Park-esque, man. In the dangerous labyrinth of fantastical worlds. Welcome to the lands of fame. Every portal is a chance for salvation. Oh, Uniting the beautiful, lost absolutely beautiful. So much to take away from the trailer. Into this nightmare. The crafting, the creatures, the landscapes, the players. There's three other players there. Nightingale, our beacon of hope. This is stunning. But beyond our reach. As long as we stand together. It's a big daddy. <laughs> Stargate S1 is a hundred percent. You, the realm walkers, are all that is left. Walk. It's beautiful. It looks fantastic. Um, all they've said is that playtesting is coming and potentially the near future outside of that uh, Nothing, but it looks Wicked man. It looks really wicked. It's that it's that bit of the start um, Let me play again because it's really cool. It's the uh, It's the I, I got full-on, you know Raptors You know uh, Praying on her and then the t-rex comes and it's just like fuck you terrifying i love it i love it so much this bit this is surrounded them boom look at that shit fantastic really really stunning so yeah this is this is uh this is nightingale and i think it's something we should we should keep an eye out for of course it's like uh not massively multiplayer for a, for a community our size it's probably not something that we'll go um balls deep on because it's just not big enough for us all i don't think but it's really something we should we should we should keep an eye out for because it looks wicked